Welcome back to the vlog, guys, and welcome back to beautiful PNG. My name is Ryan, and on today's flight, we are flying from Port Moresby up to Goroka. Once I get to Goroka, I'm going to attempt to do a simulated engine failure from 18,000 feet all the way down to the ground. And not only land on the runway, I actually want to land on a specific spot, so stay tuned to the end to see if I fail, because everybody loves people failing. So let's go ahead and get out of here and get started. Okay, first things first, I'm going to go ahead and call up for my ATC clearance, which is clearance delivery in the States, and call for startup. Check on ground, November Tango Kilo. Request ATC clearance, Goroka. November Tango Kilo, ATC clearance uh, 64, cruise 1 8000, squawk 0343. Departure 64, cruise 1 8000, squawk 0343, November Tango Kilo. And requesting start, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, start up route. November Tango Kilo. Let's go ahead and put our squat code in here and hit transponder code and our code was zero three four three. It gave us start clearance, so let's go ahead and get started. Get the blowers going because it is stinking hot. Thirty-six degrees Celsius. We are in the sun, but probably not that high. Clear. Alright, first things first, I'm gonna always just check my switches, yeah, make six, sure six, my power lever's all the way back. I'm in feather. Go ahead and check all of. Go ahead and check all of our circuit breakers, which I've just. Go ahead and check. Make sure our power lever's back. Prop is in feather. Cutoffs all the way back. We're just gonna check all of my fuses. Just running my finger on them. I can see if they're up. Make sure our fuel is on. And everything is reading zero in the green. Let's go ahead and hit start. Bring our NG up to 14% before introducing our fuel. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That was our secondary igniters. Takes 12 seconds usually to get all the way up to peak and then start dropping off. Now I release the starter, ignition is off. Fuel standby pump back, or ox fuel pump back to standby. Generator and alternator on, ox bus on. And go ahead and bring the prop out of feather. Our prop set up to 20 degrees. I already have the trim where I would like it. The lower's going because it's stinking hot. Put our V2 tracker. Our V2 is basically just a way that our company can track our own airplanes. We can use an iPad and text each other. We can text our other airplanes. And it just makes communication a thousand times easier in PNG because using the HF radio only is just a huge pain. It never works the way you want it to. All right, fuel caps and selectors are done. I've already checked my select or my caps before I got in. Our controls, and we're not going to do anything with the TOS, which is our train awareness switches and instruments. I am empty today, as always. 580, come down here to our chart. So I'm in between. I'm pretty close to 55 or 57. So I'm going to take off at 56 and come back at 65 if I had to. I'll set that up by hitting timer reference. So I said the VREF was 65 and 56 for rotate. And set up our altitude at 1 8000. Go ahead and get ATIS. Altitude 2000 feet. Scattered 3000 feet. All aircraft are required to provide persons on board. Acknowledge information, Oscar. Port Moresby Airport. Information, Oscar. Time, 2328 removed. Runway, 14. Wind, 190 degrees. 5 knots. Visibility, 1 0 kilometers or more. Temperature, 3 0. Q point, 2 5. QMH, 1 0 1 3. Alright, so our altimeter setting. QNH is 1 0 1 3. Gonna set it up on my secondary, even though it is a beautiful day. It's good to get in the habit of it. Or else I will forget it. And secondary is our thing here, so 1013. And let's go ahead and call up ground for taxi. Jackson ground, November Tango Kilo request. Taxi information, Oscar at the MAF hangar. November Tango Kilo, taxi only point runway 14 right. And uh, just confirming that's 1 POB. Only point 14 right and affirmative 1 POB, November Tango Kilo. Let's so get the break off. Check is good. Already done my flaps. Which is an 
and instruments. I've already got all of those set up. We just set all that up. And all of my T's and P's. My temperatures and pressures are all in the green where we want it. I've already got my trim. We'll go over a board when we get a little bit closer to the runway. All right, taxi light is on. All right, our pre-takeoff briefing is going to be as follows. If we're not 50 knots by the first taxiway, we're going to abort full reverse. Heavy braking, flaps up, cut off, pull off, shut off if we're going off. After takeoff, pitch for 85, consider EPL, otherwise consider feather, that sole. We are for sure going down at that point, it's going to be cut off, pull off, and shut off. Crack our doors, hit emergencies, and call the tower. 80 full flaps. Crack our door close to the ground to brace. Our ignition is on. Here is the holding. Nope, one more. All right, we're at holding point one four right. Go ahead and switch over to tower. Jackson Tower, November Tango Kilo, holding point one four right. Ready. November Tango Kilo, one four right. Make right turn. Ready, everyone. Cliff Tango. Cliff takeoff, Right turn. Radar airborne. November Tango. It's 32 degrees, we are sea level today, so our torque is going to be 1590, so we're going to bring it back 50, so it rises up that extra 50 pounds as we get going, so 1540 for 1590, rotate at 56, so ignition, landing lights, back to pulse, we are on bypass, been cleared for takeoff, so ignition, condition, which is the fuel, flaps 20, Pull in harnesses, checklist complete. 1540 for 1590. Alright, our speed is alive, over 50, we're continuing. Here's our road check. Good morning, Alpha Hotel, Wajo, Debbie, 4500. Our climb out of ITT is going to be 740 degrees Celsius. So we're airborne, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to our Jackson Radar. Jackson Radar, November Tango, Kilo Airborne, passing 500 for 18,000. Right hand turn now. November Tango, Kilo Jackson Radar, morning again, no chance identified. November Tango. Alright, she'll get us identified in just a second. We're on a right hand turn out, cleared to 18,000. It's approaching 1,000 feet now. We're going to lower the nose over 85 degrees. We're going to 85 degrees, 85 knots. We're going to reduce our flaps to 10 degrees. Over 90, we're going to go ahead and reduce all the way to zero. So we're just going to go ahead and pitch for the best rate of climb. So we're going to tango kilo very right level. 1,480. So we're going to tango kilo identified. Right here, direct to staff. Third direct star November tango kilo. All right, we've been cleared to our point. We're going to go ahead and bring our prop back down to 2,000 RPM. Set up our best rate at 100 knots. Let's clear this direct start. We're going to go bring our ITT also back. So I'm going to go ahead and hit just direct enter enter. And then hit nav nav. That's going to get our autopilot to connect with that course and fly direct to start, which is our first point on our flight back. All right, we're going to leave landing light on and everything, but we're going to go ahead and put our inertial separator into normal and our ignition is turned off. Bring our ITT right up to 724, the best power for climb. So I have about an hour and 20 minutes or so back to Garoka. So we'll pick back up when we get a little bit closer back into Garoka, where I'll do my simulated engine failure from 18,000 and see how it goes. Hey guys, we are 18 miles out of our destination. We're going to do a simulated engine failure at this altitude, 18,000, all the way down to 5,000, and try to land on the runway on the 1,000 foot marker. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to reduce my power back to 250 foot pounds of torque, props full forward. That's going to give me my simulated, basically, engine failure in feather. First things first. My airspeed, I'm going to go ahead and bring it back. Check my weight on my aux page, 5,000. 92 knots is my best glide. Again, best field, ABCD, 
is my airfield. We're coming up on 92 knots. Let's go ahead and call up tower real quick. If this was a real thing, I'd do my checklist. First things first, I just go through ignition, consider EPL, my emergency power level, power lever. Go ahead and feather if that doesn't work, and then cut off, analyze my gauges. Try to restart if I can. If I can't, cut off and uh, shut off and be done with that. I'm going to go ahead and call up tower now. Rocket tower, November Tango Kilo. Go ahead. November Tango Kilo, Rocket Tower. November Tango Kilo, one five miles to the south, left one eight thousand. Requesting to fly over the field for a practice simulated uh, emergency landing on three five left. November Tango Kilo, copy given eight one zero two zero. And uh, report overhead. One zero two zero reporting in overhead. November Tango Kilo. All right, so we're going to set up our standby as well. One zero two zero as well as our altimeter setting on this one. I'm going to set up my altitude of. November Tango. Kilo, just go ahead, your revised estimate, go ahead. Revised overhead 2-1, over everything, Kilo. Okay, we want 7,100 over the field, 2,000 feet over the field, and the reason why I want this is because I want to be able to get to 1,500, beam the numbers on my downwind. This plane just falls like a rock out of the sky, especially the second you start getting any flaps. It's not like a 172 where you'd be 10 degrees of flaps and it's like helps you with your lift. Pretty much you're committed to the field once you start getting your flaps in and you just start getting down at 1300 feet per minute or more once you start even getting 10 degrees of flaps. So I'm gonna go to my main page. And if this ever happened to you, um, I always recommend on all your Garmin GPSs if you just take the big knob and flip it all the way to the right and hit enter, the top one says nearest airports, and it's going to bring it up somewhere on your GPS on this one, it does up here. Then you can hit direct and enter, enter, and it's going to take you right there and show you a magenta line. Tell you how far, I'm 11.5 miles now from the field. So that's one thing you can do on your own GPS. So you can't see it, but there is a, a little blue cyan line, and it's actually past the field. So even though my best glide is 92, I'm just going to go ahead and increase my speed so that I'm basically kind of doing kind of like a crosswind at 2,000 feet over top of the field, midfield, so that when I, like I said, once I get downwind, I'm going to be 1,500 feet, and that's going to give me my best case scenario for actually landing on my spot where I want to. Oh, this isn't a real emergency. This isn't a real emergency. If this was a real emergency, I'd be pulling out my checklist and going through it, making sure that I've covered all of my main items. I always like to keep it at the page for engine loss and just have it there so that when you pull it open, you're not flipping it open. Because, like myself, if I were in a real emergency, it would probably be very cluttered thinking. So that's actually why I'm doing this today is just to cover my emergency procedures so they're more fresh in my head rather than doing it once every year on a base check. So, first things first, it says pitch, power level, power level, power lever, idle. Um, let me bring this back, I'm at 300, so let me bring it back to 250. Uh, the igniters, which we did flip on, our EPL, which we did consider our emergency power lever. Our prop, we would have feathered it. We talked about cutting this off, we talked about analyzing it, and then a restart. After a restart's not able, then it says to go ahead and just shut everything down. The field is like eight miles away. It's like right, right there though. So I'm gonna just go ahead and bring my cyan line a little bit closer. I can do some S turns. And yeah, so basically what I'm going to do, once I get a beat my numbers is I'm gonna turn fairly close to the field. I'd rather slip it in and even land maybe past my point, but somewhere on the runway, then try to land more towards the end of the runway. Um, I, rather than trying to just aim towards the end of the runway, what happens if like you misjudge your glide or your amazing skills and you come up short? I'd rather land long on the runway, and maybe shoot halfway down or something. I'm only shooting for maybe a thousand foot in, so that is kind of the thing, but this is a simulated, but Anyways, I'm looking for a line that I can see very easily in the video for you guys. 
to see if I actually land on it or not. That's why I'm picking the thousand foot. If this was a real one, I'd be picking halfway down the runway so that when I actually do start sinking way faster than I thought I was originally going to, I'm much further down and I have so much more play. But because it's a simulated one, I can add power. I'm really not that worried about it. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and start my pre-landing checklist. I check my selectors, they are on, my brakes are on. Our V-Ref, which is going to be our speed coming in, we're going to have 85 knots with 20 degrees of flaps and 80 knots at the slowest with full flaps when we're basically at 250 foot-pound of torque. So I can put my V-Ref in. I don't really need to because I've memorized those numbers so many times, but if I wanted to, I can put that in as 80 at slowest. We're going to do our landing lights on, our taxi light bypass under 140. We're going to go ahead and flip off our pitot heat because I was at 18,000. It was a little bit cold up there. I'm going to go ahead and leave my oxygen on even though I don't need to. I'm going to give myself, my brain power, the best case scenario. So I'm going to keep oxygen on all the way to the ground and it's going to help me think clear. So abort, if for some reason we have to had to go around for some reason, we're going to go ahead and power up 20 degrees of flaps, pitch for 73, straight ahead out or maneuver as required, come back around, props and harnesses, we have them where we want, harnesses, I'm going to go ahead and put now because once we get started into this, these are going to start happening really, really fast and I, don't, I want to have all of this done beforehand. Croker Tower November, Tango Kilo overhead at this time, 11000. We'll report again at 7000 overhead. November, Tango Kilo, copy, report again 7000. November, Tango Kilo. So on the G1000, I'm not familiar with some of the other um, PSs and whatnot, but I really like how it does give you a a cyan like little half moon to show you where you're actually going to get to your altitude. Super super helpful in planning things like this or even just plan it's obviously for planning for your descent but it's really really helpful in automating as much things as you can to lower your workload especially as a single pilot. Um, autopilot and everything else that's like I'm the co-pilot to all that because it is more likely or less likely to screw up than I am. All right, so I'm just keeping my speed up a little bit faster because I am over the field now. I'm not as worried about keeping my 92 knots. I'm at 114 knots at this time. We're just making a nice descending turn. The field is three miles off my right wing. I have flaps and landing clearance to go. I'm gonna go ahead and ask for my landing clearance when I'm over top of the field on my crosswind midfield because basically after that, I've got less than a minute to get on the ground and I don't want to have to remember to tell him when I'm on my base because more than likely I'll be forgetting because I'll be focusing on what I'm trying to do. All right, keep my torque at 250. As I go down, my torque is going to increase, so I'm just keeping pulling it back. All right, I'm at 8,000 feet to go. Or, or not, to go. I'm at 8,000 feet, I have 1,000 feet to go, so I'm just gonna start S-turning. I'm not gonna do a full another 360, actually what I think I'm going to do is just kind of enter into a long downwind, try to manage my altitude and my speed so that I am basically a beam, the thousand foot marker. Okay, so like I said, you can see out there now, probably the thousand foot marker, that's what I'm going to shoot for, just because it's a big white line and it's easier to see in a video um, for touchdown, Like, but like I said, I, if this was a real emergency, I'd be shooting definitely for halfway down. Tower November Tango Kilo 7000 at this time overhead, requesting landing clearance at this time. November Tango Kilo, runway 35 left, clear to land. Clear to land 35 left, November Tango Kilo. And, alright, at this point I'm going to go for 92 knots to get my best absolute set because I want to be at 6600 of be my numbers. And I'm at 6700 at this moment right now. Been cleared to land. I'm not going to worry about my flaps. We're going to get that in just a second. I'm at 6680 now. We're almost a beam our landing spot. All right, so now I'm past 6600. I haven't quite got there at this point. I'm going 
at 80, 10 degrees here in a second. Pitching for my 85 knots. Right, 10 degrees of flaps. Pitch for 85. Right, I'm going to go ahead and make my turn now. Even though I'm not that far, I'm only 1.2 miles out. I'd rather slip it in. As I'm turning, I'm losing a lot of altitude because you don't have as much lift. All right, 20 degrees of flaps. Knots. A little bit fast. Ups up. Oh, I landed on the 500 foot marker, so about 500 feet past it. Actually, not technically on this runway because they didn't paint them correct on the Garoka airstrip. They're not quite 500. But either way, I just barely passed it by 500 feet. But thank you so much for taking the time to watch. If you enjoyed this video, hey, give me a thumbs up. I'd really appreciate it. It helps me out with the YouTube algorithm. Be sure to check out some more videos coming up. I've got a lot more of this kind of stuff and uh, even a little bit more interesting stuff going into some like bush locations, jungle airstrips, mountain airstrips, things like that. So be sure to check those out and consider subscribing if you liked what you watched. So again, thank you so much for taking the time to watch and uh, have a great day. See you next time.